Hi, my name is John Cordy and Ronald asked to see more dogs in the videos. This one's Nemo, he comes with three legs. Um, one of the features of this dog is that he's actually trying to get to another dog, um, which is fine. Have you ever tried holding a three-legged dog? It's tricky. And another feature of this dog is that at night he will do this noise to get up onto the bed and down off the bed all night. That's how he works, isn't it? So, Nemo, that's one of the dogs. He is uh, a great lad. What are you doing? Yeah. Right, on the video. Okay, so this may prove to be a slightly short demo. I wanted to just do a video. I've discovered this uh, chorus yesterday, the 70s chorus in the Helix from 1976. And it's also based on the same uh, chorus they had in the Roland Jazz Chorus, JC120 in 1975. Um, I think slightly different in that you could control the chorus rate, whereas on the actual amp itself you cannot. But I found some things with it yesterday that I really like. So I just wanted to do a demo of this and we'll put this between an amp, or maybe just after an amp and cab. So I'll start off with, let's just go for something reliable, matchstick channel one. I'm going to let Fenton, Fenton's son back downstairs, hold on. So anyway, what I'm going to do, I'll put this matchless here and, I don't know, that'll probably sound fine I imagine. And then what I want to also do is add in just a glitz reverb, something really straightforward, and then so what I want to suggest doing is turn this chorus rate down fairly low but you'll see that if we use this stereo classic mode this is my favorite thing about this particular effect you get a huge wide stereo field with it And to me that sounds potentially a little bit more subtle than something like the double take, which is what I was using yesterday. Um, so you've also got vibrato depth and stuff if you want to use the vibrato mode, so you can switch those per snapshot if you wanted to. Sorry, I'll just turn off autofocus. <laughs> Uh, for me personally, I quite like slow vibrato rate. And do we get that same thing going on with the... So if I just wanted that stereo spreading effect, I could turn the vibrato depth way down. And 
just take advantage of just that aspect of the effect. So it's quite a versatile little chorus effect, really. You can either have that lush chorus sound or the vibrato sound or put it to vibrato mode and turn the depth all the way down and just take advantage of this really cool stereo thing. Um, headroom, I guess, will enable you to run hotter effects into this chorus, which might be a good idea if you're kind of going post-amp. Um, I don't know what spread is going to do. Probably going to be difficult to hear from over here. If I turn spread all the way up. Maybe it's to do with the... So for me, just a really beautiful effect because it's doing these chorus things but in a fairly subtle way and I think super usable um, in a way that sometimes I find chorus can be a bit off-putting. Um, there's something fairly dated sound about it in some contexts I find. Um, but this classic mode and with the chorus rate low, I really like it. And... <laughs> So there's my favourite chorus effect in the Helix. Now I think uh, the Trinity chorus is also really nice, but I think this is the one for me just because of the versatility. You've got vibrato, you've got chorus, you've also got whatever this little stereo thing is doing, which I think is truly beautiful um, and a really good way to spread things across the stereo field. And I'm going to do that in an intro now. And what I'll do is probably do some freeze stuff and I'm going to be using the 70s chorus to kind of throw the, the trails into like a stereo-ness and stuff. This is going to be my go-to for a lot of things now, I think. Catch you in another video soon, and hopefully that was vaguely interesting to one or two of you. Cheers. Oh, well, let me know if you want me to drop this into the folder. I will be able to do that for you. Cheers.